Hi, my name's Steve. Welcome to another Mind Bomb training video. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about um, professional telephone sales. Um, not really what I would call the, the nuisance end of um, telephone sales where it's high volumes and uh, pre-scripted content. Um, I'm working on some fairly dubious um, products quite often. Um, but really, no, the, the regular uh, customer contacts that we all have to um, uh, indulge in from time to time, whether we identify as salespeople or not, um, really it's to do with the, the uh, types of business that have regular, repeat, um, ongoing relationship with their um, customers. And um, obviously it can cover a wide range of um, the staff, so um, it might obviously be the order processing people, the regular um, sales team if you like. Um, but also, uh, this could be useful for um, uh, other people within the, the customer service spectrum. Um, anyone that's really dealing with the, uh, the customers on a, a regular basis. Um, so, first off, just before we get into the, um, the technique and the, the process that I like to think about when we're doing um, professional telephone sales, um, it might just be worth refreshing on the, the basics as far as the uh, the sales process is concerned. Um, I have actually got a, a video already on this, so um, I'll put a link in the, the description below. And um, if you're uh, coming to this new, if you're a, um, a new starter in the, the uh, telephone sales business, you might like to look at the, the sales process first. Um, have a look at that before we move on slightly to um, a slightly more specialized approach, if you like, uh, for the, the telephone sales. Uh, so first off, I'd like to take a look at what um, I would do before the call um, so that we can look at the, the whole process. Obviously, it's a um, good idea to be well prepared before the call. Um, so I like to take five or ten minutes out just to think about what I'm actually going to be doing for, for that day. Um, and really, you need to set some targets at the start. So whether that's going to be 20 calls, 50 calls across the day, um, depends on the type of... Um, prospecting or customer contact that you're actually doing. Um, but set yourself some targets to make sure that you've got um, some milestones and some uh, achievable goals that you can actually set for the, the day's work. Um, that way you can keep focused. And obviously if you're exceeding those targets, um, you get that feedback and that positive uh, motivation uh, from the, the whole uh, process. Um, the second point on before the call, um, a lot of people like to have a script, uh, but personally, it, for me, it takes out some of the energy and the um, immediacy of a, a conversation. Um, if you have a script, it can be useful for some people, but um, I actually find it somewhat stilted. And um, it's better for me to be able to just write down some um, key phrases, key questions that I've got to make sure to ask everybody. Um, and obviously, you know, some of the the key things, if I'm trying to let everybody know about a new product that we've just launched, then you want to jot down some of the product details and some of the key strengths for that product um, and make sure that you can actually get that across in every conversation. So not really a script or not for me, then um, just more a, a case of a, a maybe a page of bullet points um, that you actually want to get across in each conversation. Um, the third point before the call is um, about the research. Uh, a lot of people seem to just pitch into um, the, the phone call a bit cold and um, know nothing about the, the people that they're actually contacting. So um, if it's a new uh, prospect, a new call, then it's easy nowadays. You can soon find out a bit about the company, um, check the website and um, just find out a bit about the person that you're likely to be contacting. And that way you'll have a bit of background and um, have some idea uh, before you get onto the conversation with the individual. Um, equally, it may well be if it's an existing customer, really you should know all the details about that account, how much business they've been doing with you, um, all of that kind of thing before you actually start making the, the call so that you've got an, an idea of the, um, the last time that they ordered, the sorts of orders, the items that they're ordering, um, because that might give you a, a lead as to what else they might be interested in buying from you. So um, make sure to do your research before you actually get on the phone. Moving on to the, the call itself, uh, I've broken this down into a, a few sections. So um, obviously you want an introduction um, 
everybody's got to be clear and um, you've got to uh, let people know exactly who you are and what you're calling for. Um, and at this stage, if it's, a, um, if it's not a foot in the door sort of um, sales call, if it's a regular repeat call, I would normally just make sure that the, the customer that you're calling has actually got time to speak to you. Um, it's not a done thing within the, um, like I say, the more sort of hard edged uh, telephone sales call because it can be a, it can be a closed door. It's a, a closed question effectively. Um, you're giving the customer the option. But if it's someone that you're going to deal with on a regular basis, you don't want them rushing to get off the phone because they've got kids in the background or they're driving or whatever it is. So at the start of the call, just um, double check. Have you got five minutes to speak to me? That's all you need to, to say. Um, and then you can actually lead into the, the rest of the call. Confirmation. I've actually put down confirmation because if you're um, doing a, a, a round of calls and it's all about new contacts, you're actually prospecting for um, new potential customers for the business, then the confirmation um, is to make sure that you're actually speaking to the, the right person that's going to be making the decisions. Um, you want to make sure that you've actually got the, uh, the right uh, contact before you pitch in with the, um, the rest of the call. Um, if, for instance, on your database it's got one name, that person may well have left um, or they may have moved responsibility and taken over something else. So you want to just double check that you're actually speaking to the right person uh, that's going to be involved in the, the particular decision making that you're um, interested in. Um, after that, then you're into the, the process with the basic sales steps you'll see. Um, there should be a, a relationship building and, and then a questioning. For me, that all kind of rolls into one for a, a regular contact call. Um, questioning needs to be a natural approach um, rather than just a, a rapid fire succession of um, kind of bullet point questions. But you do obviously need to work through into the conversation. Um, if you're introducing a new product, for instance, then is it something that they already sell? Is it something that they already deal with? Um, you know, what sort of volumes do they do? Is it something that could go through into all of their stores if they've got a number of stores? Then that kind of um, evolving discussion uh, has got to come through the, the questioning approach. And you certainly want some key questions jotted down um, on the, the prompt list at the start of the call. The other point I put is um, make sure to, to make notes as you're going through. Uh, you've got to be um, multitasking effectively. So make sure that while you're talking to people, you're actually jotting down the, the pertinent bits of information. Make sure the important stuff gets noted down. Because if you're going through a volume of calls, um, if you're doing 20, 30, 40 calls in a day, you want to make sure that you've actually jotted down the, the relevant um, bits. You may be going back to this customer to uh, follow something up um, in a couple of weeks time. So make sure you've got the notes about um, what you've discussed, whether you've offered a special price, whether there's a a discussion over the, uh, the particular new product that you're introducing. Um, all of those kind of things need to be noted down, whether it's on a, a customer database system or just in an old fashioned journal um, so that you can actually keep something to uh, refer back to next time. Um, as you move through the conversation, um, the, there is going to be a point where you uh, need to push for a, a, a put close or action. So you want a, a decision on something in particular, and this may be um, set out for, well, for yourself, for your side of things. It may be something that you set out in advance. So your objective may actually only be to um, get the customer's details so that you can then send some samples to them, for instance. Um, it may not be a close for an order in particular, but you want to be able to develop the, the, the process and then um, be able to uh, well, remember to make sure that you're actually going to um, send the samples out and then um, that is the action point that you can then follow up at a later date. So maybe you're closing for an order, maybe it's something else, um, but close or action is um, getting towards the, the latter part of the call. Um, and then obviously at the end you're going to summarise the information. So you've gone through the, the discussion with the, the customer Make sure to just double check um, you haven't missed anything, um, you haven't misunderstood anything for that matter. 
and um, you're going to then get to a, a summary of the, the call. It should only be a couple of sentences just to make sure that they understand and you understand exactly what you've discussed um, and what the, the follow-up point should be. So you've got a, a natural few steps to, to follow through the, the telephone call itself. So equally as important as the, uh, the bit before the call is what you actually do directly after the call. You need to make sure that immediately that you have finished with the, the customer that you take the, the follow-up action. So if, you're, if you've said that you're going to update the, um, the database at your side, make sure that you've got the, the right customer contact details. That sort of thing you need to do directly after the call so that it isn't missed at a, a later date. And the same if you're going to send some samples out, make sure that you organise the samples at your side before you move on to the next one. Um, and then you, you're less likely to forget about it and you make sure that the, the follow-up action is actually completed. I think uh, really that's what I would call the, the housekeeping of the call um, to make sure that you've done all of the things that you've discussed and you've kept your, your promises, whatever it is that you've spoken to the customer about. If you've arranged to um, give them a special quote on something, make sure that that quotation is done before you actually uh, move on to the, to the next one. Um, so it, it's certainly important to make sure that the, the follow-up action is completed, that housekeeping action immediately after the call. Um, the other step of, along that as well is if you're going to um, follow up the, the call at a later date, you need to make sure that that's going in the diary. However you keep your records for uh, follow-up um, information, um, maybe it's a week later after they've received the samples to so follow it up and see whether you whether the product's what they expected and whether you're going to get the order, then that's got to go into the diary um, and into your callback system. So um, as a follow-on from the housekeeping, that is your um, detail as to what's going to happen after the call. Um, and the third thing that I would suggest for every call, whether it's a new prospect, whether it's a, a confirmation call, whether it's just trying to wake up some um, existing customers that have uh, lapsed for whatever reason, then there should always be a follow-up email. It's all too easy to, for a customer to be speaking to two or three people at the same time, not take everything in. Um, if you've arranged samples, you need to, to follow up the, uh, the agreement to send the samples. Um, if you've arranged an appointment, you might want to be going to, to meet that customer. Um, you need to confirm all of that, otherwise from the, the customer's side, um, it's all too easy to come off the phone at their end and move on to the next thing and forget about what you've agreed. So make sure every phone call gets a follow-up email. It can be a, a copy and paste job for a lot of things, um, but try and personalise it so that there's something in the conversation um, that goes to them that's actually personal to them. But make sure that they get that email an hour later, um, however long, whenever they you know, next check through their emails, they want to see the, the confirmation of um, the, the phone call with yourself. Obviously a lot depends on the, the middle stage um, the, of the call itself as to uh, how this will actually play out in reality. And I can tell you from experience, um, there will be times when you'll come across someone that just hasn't got time to speak to you or that's having a bad day and they're, they're not going to be um, particularly welcoming. Um, but if you treat them with the, the civility and and the respect that you would expect yourself, then you should actually get that back from the customer. There'll be the odd one, um, you know, no doubt, if, especially if it's new prospects and uh, you're trying to call people out of the blue. But the, the truth is that um, really, if you follow the, the process and speak to them um, uh, in the same, same way that you would like to be spoken to and just approach them with that um, degree of respect, then you should actually get a, um, a good response from most people, the majority of people. And um, it's hardly noticeable then, once you actually get the odd one <laughs> that might actually be um, uh, less than happy to be speaking to a salesperson on the phone again. Um, and in terms of regular ongoing relationship with the, uh, the customer, you want to remember that people buy from people. So um, it's the old sales adage, but um, it's still true now. Um, if you can build up the relationship over a period of time, it's so much easier and people are, are likely to be much more willing to take the phone call next time if you can actually build the relationship over a, a period of time. And what that means is 
you have to do what you say you're going to do. So all of this is um, only as good as the, the follow-up action. Um, make sure that you actually uh, do what you say you're going to do and keep your word on things. Um, if you're going to change something, if you're going to send some samples out, it's got to go. Make sure that, that actually happens and make sure that the follow-up actually um, goes through after the call. All of that is actually just as important as the, the middle bit of um, dealing with the customer actually on the phone. So um, for me, the, the three steps are equally weighted. So you should actually um, work your way through uh, step by step and make sure that you put equal effort into all three stages. Um, that way, then hopefully, the targets will um, uh, naturally fall and uh, the sales process will get easier as you build those relationships with the customers. So that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one and uh, see you next time. Thank you.